Hi guys, welcome back to part three in this practical Rhino CAD tutorial. This time we're looking at how to create a tapered lofted shouldered shank to fit around the setting for the custom made gemstone that we made in the previous parts one and two. So let's get started. Before I get into making the shank, you may be worried about the flat bottom and intersection of the collet into the finger rail. Don't worry about that now, we'll be dealing with that later. So first of all, the way that we're going to create this shank is to plan an outside edge in the front view. So the first thing to consider is how thick I want the back of the shank to be. So I want this to be about two millimeters. So I'm going to click my ring rail and offset the distance of two, which it already is, outside. Now I want the shoulders to rise up and sort of loft smoothly from the nine and three o'clock position until they intersect with the collet. Now, it's sometimes easy to do this just by manipulating a simple circle like this, and that's what we're going to do. So let's go into wireframe so we can see through the setting. And now I can see this control point at the top of my circle. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to grab the gumball Y axis uh, handle and pull it up until I get the intersection with the collet that I want, so around about here. So you can see it's instantly and symmetrically lofted the shoulder up in a really nice uh, tangential manner. So now with that's done, we can go on to making the blank. Now I'm back into perspective, and the next stage is to extrude these two curves into a solid flat block. So to do that, I'm going to go into a new layer, go to solid, extrude planar curve straight. Now I want about four millimeters at the back. So I might make that 4.1 to allow a little bit of extra cleanup on the flat sides. So I'm going to type 4.1 slash two. And that will give me half extrude from each side to give me a total width of 4.1. So now we've got that blank sorted, we can start to refine it. But before we do that, let's just cut off the excess of this triangular piece at the top that we no longer need. So to do that, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. Note I've got ortho on as usual, just above where the shoulders begin to intersect with the setting. So with that done, I'm going to type in wire cut, select objects that cuts this, press enter, enter again, that's split into two, delete the part I don't want. And if we turn the stone and the setting off, we can see the new block that we're working with. Before we move on, I'm just going to delete the curves we don't need. So this one and this one. And now we can look at softening and tapering these shoulders so that it flows better into the setting. So first I want to soften all of the hard edges on this flat blank. And we're going to do that with solid fillet edge, fillet edge. Now I'm going to add a fairly heavy radius to all edges about 0.6 of a millimetre, which it's already set to on my uh, radius settings. But if it's not, you just click there and type in 0.6. Then it says select edges to fill it. Well, I want all the edges, so I'm just going to drag a box around the whole item. Press enter once, enter again. And there you can see it instantly softens the whole item. Now next, the taper. So looking in the side view here, I want to determine and mark off exactly where I would like to taper the top edge of this shank to. Now I'd like the top edge of the shank where it intersects with the setting to be approximately 1.5 millimeters wide. So to do that, I'm going to first draw a line through the center of the model from zero comma zero, like so, then offset this line half of that distance. So that's 0.75 and click. Now to mark off the other way, I'm going to draw a horizontal line from approximately where the shoulders currently intersect with the head. Draw that to the left. Note that I've got orthographic on to help me with that. If I turn the setting and the shank off, delete the middle line, we can see the intersection point here where it needs to be. So to mark that point, I'm going to put a point object just there on that intersection. So these lines are no longer necessary and they can go. Turn the shank back on and go into ghosted. 
and we're ready to begin the tapering process. So to taper the shoulders of this ring, we're going to use the cage edit command again in a similar way that we used it to transform the pavilion of the stone earlier in the mod. So I'm going to select the shank, type cage edit, enter, bounding box, world, standard point count, 444333, enter, region to edit, global, enter, and now we're good to go. So I'm going to zoom in a bit on the top, select the top row of control points, and you can just see the square one dimensional scale handle for the gumball. So I'm going to click and hold, and I've got ortho on, and I'm going to drag these to the right until the outside yellow line on the left hits the control point that we placed earlier. You can see here. Now I'll do that once more because it's not entirely obvious. So I select the control points at the top. I'm going to grab the 1D scale handle here, and I'm watching the left edge of my shank. Now, because we're using the 1D scale, as I drag it in and we've got them all selected, it will scale or taper the uh, top part of the shoulders symmetrically. So from left and right in equal measure. So I'm going until my yellow line on the outside edge approximately intersects with my point object. So if we go back into perspective, we can see the effect this has had for not a lot of effort, really. I do like this way of tapering shanks. So with that done, we can delete the cage and the point, turn the setting back on, and move on to the finishing stages of the model. So the last things we have to do are remove this piece of the shank, which is left over, that clips through the inside of the setting, and also cut the bottom of the collet off so that it fits to our finger rail in the front view. Now, the reason we haven't cut this before, as I mentioned earlier in this part of the video, is because we're going to use the setting as a cutting object to do a Boolean difference command to remove this piece cleanly from the shank. So to do that, I'm going to type Boolean difference in the command bar. The object to subtract from is our shank, enter. Surfaces to subtract with is our collet. Now be sure that delete input is no, so we don't lose this in the process, and press enter. Now at first glance, it seems that nothing's happened. But if I turn the setting off, you can see where the shank and the setting intersected, it's removed that material cleanly. So now we can just delete this piece that's left over, and we have a nice tight fit between the setting and the shoulders. Now to remove the inside of the finger where the collet is intersecting, we're going to use a command we've used several times in this uh, tutorial. We're going to select the ring rail, and we're going to type wire cut. Objects to cut is the bottom of the setting, enter. Cut depth, I'm just going to press enter to cut through. And now we have separated into two pieces. We can just delete the bottom part. And there we have a nice clean cut through and a nice clean intersection between the inside of the shank and the bottom of the setting. And final finishing touches, we can use the Boolean union command to join the shank to the head. Now I would normally save at this point. So if I wanted to split the model up at a later date, I don't have it saved with the parts already joined. And also join with a Boolean union, the top of the setting to the bottom of the setting. So we have one whole piece. And it's a good idea just to check this over for naked edges to make sure we're okay for printing. So go to click the model, Analyze, Edge Tools, Show Edges, and it tells me that we have no naked edges and no non manifold edges. So we know we're good for printing. Thanks for watching the third part in this video tutorial series. Look out for a bonus part four where we'll be cutting a simple gallery into our bezel setting to improve its appearance and reduce weight. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments section and I'll try my best to answer them. To see more content like this, please follow my page on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're considering inquiring about booking a bespoke online CAD lesson with me, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. See you next time.